We're July 11th today. Uh, we're looking at the plots in the, at, at the plant in Palmerston. Uh, a few things that we wanted to comment about today on these plots. Looking at our Princeton variety, definitely our flagship of the hard red varieties. There's a reason for that. Note the, uh, note the long heads that's on the Princeton. It's got a really high yield potential of, as uh, compared to other hard reds. A uh, fair bit of straw strength to be able to support the tall taller variety. It's a very, very good stand here. And I think we've got the, uh, the population caused from a uh, combination of, of seeding rate last fall plus accurate ac nitrogen applications this spring to be able to get us with a field that has a lot of heads, long heads, and definitely uh, no lodging that's happening in the Princeton plot. Again, this is Princeton. Uh, it does have very good fusarium tolerance, but obviously we've had some conditions that do cause fusarium, and there's another head hat partially bleached. Uh, that's a telltale sign of fusarium infection. This head we're looking at here right now is uh, a full head of fusarium. You can tell that's not take all because the uh, stem is still healthy. So what fusarium does is move up and down that head and infect all the kernels, and this one obviously has got a full head. Here we are July 11th on this plot. Uh, you notice the white bear, a very early maturing winter wheat. Certainly our, it is a white wheat, hard white. Uh, we're certainly looking at, at harvesting this earlier than the rest of the plot because of the risk of, uh, the possible risk of uh, sprouting under incl inclement temperatures and the dropping of falling numbers. But a very, very even field of wheat here with lots of uh, early maturity on it. You'll note that the leaves are now natural senescence, that they're starting to turn, and uh, that means that we're getting closer to harvest all the time. I'm showing this flag leaf simply because you see a little bit of, e of uh, uh, feeding on that flag leaf. The cutout area there has been actually armyworm feeding, and uh, if we look at the soil down here, you can actually see some black particles on the ground as well which is actually the uh, um, feces from the armyworm. You can see the specks of it on the ground. So uh, if we come out in the, in, the morning or after, in the morning or early evening, we could likely see some armyworm in this field. Here's our newest variety in the hard red category. It's a closed loop variety called Priestley. Note the, uh, note the upright structure on this variety, all the upright leaves. It, it handles, handles populations well, it stands really good, and it has just fantastic yield uh, potential in this variety. In the plots that were, uh, in the experimental plots, we had yield results above 110% of other varieties. This field is certainly showing the same kind of potential for these, these uh, dynamite yields that we have. Here's typical cereal leaf beetle feeding. There's a very, very minor problem in this field, but you note the white bleached out area on the leaf. That's so typical of uh, cereal leaf beetle. The other thing that's telltale is if you walk through the field and you have light colored pants and you have all kinds of green feces on, on your pants that look like uh, stains, grass stains, that's certainly the next telltale sign of being able to scout for cereal leaf beetle. On the left is Priestley, on the right is Keldon. You can see the height difference between the two varieties. Priestley uh, is a little bit shorter than Keldon, which is actually a very short variety to begin with. So good standability on both these varieties. Standing in front of the Brooklyn plot, the main thing that I want to highlight with this variety is look at the, look at the height of it. It's got great standability. It's great for the guys that want to push their wheat and get maximum yields out of it. Uh, it's not going to go down very easily. It's very, very rugged. The other thing is to note that we do see this year some of the genetic deviation in the variety, so we've got some talls in here. But note the, uh, note the length of those talls. They're not going to hurt your yield because they're the longest heads in the field. On the right of this plot, we're looking at 614, and on the left, we're looking at Brooklyn. And uh, you can see this year, the two varieties are basically the same height, whereas typically 614 is a little bit taller than Brooklyn, so uh, uh, unique to this year. We're just looking at a flag leaf of the Keldon plant. Uh, you can see that it's a very wide flag leaf, which is one of its big benefits. The other reason we're looking at this is because there's a little bit of septoria on the leaf there. You can tell by the little black dots on the, on the leaf. 
we're just looking at the 614 in the plot here. Uh, it's side by side with the uh, with the Brooklyn. It's slightly higher. It's got tremendous green green leaf disease package. So it's got a strong leaf disease package with lots of green material that's there. And it works, the main, the best thing about 614 is it works on all soil types across all of Ontario. It's a very, very adaptable variety. We're looking here at a brand new variety, a new soft red CM249. Uh, it's at an experimental stage. We're looking at it, it is a non-variety, has really good upward yield potential. We just want you to keep a look at keep looking at CM249 in the plots. It's a really good future variety for CNM seeds.